Hi everyone, I'm going to try and film this in one take today. We'll see if that actually works out. I wasn't going to upload a video this week, if I'm being honest, because I'm not in a great headspace. Um, but filming also makes me feel a bit better. And I don't want to not film and disappear. I don't want to film and, and fake something I'm not feeling. So I'm sorry if I'm a bit low energy today, but you know, I think we all get it, right? The world is weird right now. Um, so yes, I wanted to sit down and talk to you about some things that I've been enjoying recently, some things that have been bringing a smile to my face. Um, I have written a list which is on my phone. I will link anything that I can link in the description box down below. And I would love to know in a comment what you have been enjoying recently. I would really love that. So firstly, shows that I have been enjoying, I have been loving Motherland, which was a recommendation from Lauren over at Lauren Wade Reads. It is not a new program. I think the first season was from 2017, but I had never seen it before. I think a new season has just come out on BBC, but the first two series are at least on UK Netflix. It is a, do we say sitcom or just comedy series? I don't know, a comedy series about several mothers and a dad and they're navigating the complexities of the PTA and I was gonna say office politics what do you call it parent politics the stuff you have to wade through the stuff you have to work out whether or not you're going to care about the balance of work child care all the stresses it is also so 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 funny so funny very dry love it very very much um I've also been enjoying re-watching the office the US version of the office is it sacrilege to say that I prefer the US version of The Office over the UK one as a British person? Is that really rude? <laughs> I don't know, I hope not. Anyway, I really do love the first few seasons of The US Office. Uh, I recently re-watched The Dinner Party episode, which I do think is one of the greatest episodes of TV ever. Love that a lot. Um, what, actually, let's get to the, the things that I can hold up. So I recently switched over my wardrobe um, from my winter stuff to spring summer stuff I mean most of it stays there all year round let's be honest I wear dungarees all year round I wear most of my dresses in both the spring and summer and the winter that's three different all year round I think is what I'm trying to say just in the more warmer months without tights and cardigans and in the winter with tights and cardigans but there are a few strappy dresses and stuff that has been hiding in the cupboard waiting for warmer weather and to be honest I think we're still waiting for the warmer weather, but one can be hopeful. Um, and when I switched everything over, I did decide to buy a couple of things for spring, summer, and I thought I would show you. So firstly is, is, is this, which actually isn't for my wardrobe at all, but I wanted to show it in conjunction with the things that I've bought because they all match and it was a complete accident, but I'm quite joyful over this accident. <laughs> So this is a mug from Anthropology, which I really love. Love it. I will link it down below if it's still available. Then I bought this shirt from Thought, which they call their Larissa shirt. Um, so it's a series of shirts that they have, which are non-iron. I, mean, I don't really, I don't iron anything. I have a steamer. If things need to be ironed, I give them a quick little steam. It's a very... Uh, cheap steamer that I wouldn't recommend that Mr. M actually burned himself on over a year ago and had to go to A&E over. That's a whole other story for another time. Another time. Anyway, you don't have to iron or steam this one at all because it's supposed to look a bit like crepe paper. You wash it and then you crinkle it up and it's all creased. My favourite kind of clothing, creased clothing. I think this will look nice actually under um, blue denim dungarees. But I really love this sunflower pattern. Love it. And then I bought a jacket from Lucy and Yak because I only have coats. Um, so yeah, I'm not really sure why I only have coats, but I thought a jacket would be quite handy. So I bought this, which is to be fair, quite autumnal, but mustard is for all year round, not just autumn. So this is their corduroy mustard jacket. They also do cotton twill ones, which I think would be lighter and possibly better for um, spring but I have loved wearing this given that also it's been quite cold recently. But look at this, look at how they all match each other. That wasn't a very good demonstration there. Look at that. Was I having a Van Gogh moment or something? I think I must have been. I don't mind. I like all of those things. I'm gonna have to go around outside actually carrying my mug so that 
people can see the the coordination and the accidental effort that I put into that. Um, speaking of things that I have been wearing, something that has brought me joy recently um, is, and I've spoken about this in recent videos, is trying wigs, which I started doing about a month ago. It hasn't been very long, but if you've been here, you know it escalated quite quickly. And now I have about eight wigs. Um, and I'll be honest, it's been very difficult wearing them in a way that I, I really didn't anticipate emotionally difficult. I very much was surprised by myself and how I felt about it. I think because it's very different wearing a wig inside for yourself, you know, playing around with, with clothes, because I really enjoy playing around with colour. Um, that is fun, but then wearing it, not that I have been out and about much at all, as you know, but wearing it out, you know, in the elements, you know, when it's windy and thinking about the practicalities of wearing a wig um, and just what that symbolises to other people has been a strange adjustment. Um, yeah, that, that's been strange, but I'm sure that I will, I will get used to it. So it's been actually quite difficult just has been but also on the flip side of that there have been moments of, of 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 joy where i've really enjoyed playing around with the wigs and and having fun with that and within that moment of joy last week jean said to me do you have a shade of wig for every pair of dungarees you own so every color of dungaree and i thought jean that sounds like a challenge and one that I accept. So I spent a lunch break last week filming a reel where I did match my colourful wigs with my colourful dungarees and I will insert a clip of that here. I'll link it down below. I, I would just insert the whole thing here but music and copyright so I will, I will link it down below but that was joyful and I had fun with that. Um, and last week was also face equality week um, which is um, something I've spoken about in previous years on this channel, but is a week to raise awareness of visual differences, disfigurements, disabilities that's run by Changing Faces UK and Face Equality International. So last week um, there was a lot of stuff on for that, um, which was very emotional, but also empowering and wonderful. Um, and I did an event with Kendra, which you can watch over on the Face Equality International Facebook page. So I'll link that down below. We were talking about the representation of disability and disfigurement in books. Uh, and I love that and I love Kendra and if you're not subscribed to Kendra I will also link her in the description box down below. A book that I read recently and really enjoyed was The Last Resort by Jan Carson. I actually love the reading experience of this as well. You know sometimes um, you just read a book at the right time. I read this on Sunday morning, I had woken up early, um, so I read it from about six to eight in one sitting. It's only about a hundred pages and I loved it. Everything was quiet and peaceful and I felt completely enveloped in this book. It is a either an interconnected short story collection or a novel, whichever one of those appeals to you the most slap that label on the front. Um, each chapter is told from the perspective of one person who lives on this trailer park and altogether their stories um, accumulate to form this, this arc narrative. And I thought it was just the right balance of surreal, intriguing. Um, yeah, she is so great at characterization um, and tension. Um, Jan writes a lot of work for radio. In fact, actually this was read on BBC Radio 4 and it might be that you may be able to listen to it on BBC Sounds, I don't know. If you can, I would recommend it because I think this would be brilliant read out. It really reminded me of Sarah Moss's book, Summer Water, both of which are about different families that live on a trailer park. And in fact, when I spoke about this online after I'd read it and said it was perfect for fans of Ali Smith and Sarah Moss, which I, I stand behind, um, Jan actually replied saying that her and Sarah are doing an event this summer about, um, I think she said about writing, she said she was going to do it in a trailer park? I can't remember. I don't remember. But anyway, I love that idea and I think reading those two books side by side would be a really interesting experience. So if you haven't read Summer Water yet, um, maybe you can think about reading the, those two together. Or if you're looking for a really short, engaging book, this one is the one for you. And speaking of Sarah Moss, this is not a favourite that I own. I do not own them. I do not plan to own them because I already own Sarah's books. But I did see over on the Granta Instagram the other day that they are reissuing a lot of Sarah's books in these beautiful editions, which are 
stunning. So if you don't already own her books, that's something you might want to check out. Plus, I think they're doing a giveaway. So I will link that Instagram post in the description box down below. Let me see what else is on my list. I put what's it's on my list. I'm not really sure the what's it's deserve to be here, but I'll mention them. <laughs> I've enjoyed eating some what's it's recently. There we go. Um, okay. A couple of cleaning products, always very exciting. I am a big, big fan of the Method Rhubarb Cleaning Spray. What do we call it? Antibac All Purpose Cleaner. Their rhubarb one, it smells so good. Remember that time when you could have people in your houses? Um, whenever I had cleaned the kitchen using that and someone came round, they would think, what they wouldn't think, they would ask, what is that air freshener you have? And I'd be like, it's not the air freshener, it's the cleaner. I love it and I think it still is my favorite but they recently brought out a peach blossom which I have loved um, and I also wanted to mention two OXO products that I haven't mentioned before. OXO are an accessible brand that well they are a brand that make accessible kitchenware so I have their wooden spoon, their can opener, their mandolin, their chopping boards. I mean chopping boards are that's just an extra thing they do. I wouldn't say it's specifically accessible. It's just something that they have in their range. Their storage tubs, which are a pop opening system, no screw lids, amazing. I recently bought these two things, which I didn't own before by them, which are for cleaning the kitchen floor. So this is gonna be difficult to show you. So let me just, <laughs> seamless, okay. This is not really a mop, is it? But it is like a mop. A spray mop so you feel this is, has method lemon and ginger cleaner in it um, and then there is a handle at the top that you can squeeze to release that liquid onto the floor and then you can sweep it using or mop it using the uh, bottom of this spray mop which has a really easy velcro uh, attachment at the bottom which you can rip off and then throw into the washing machine which is very satisfying and great and I also bought the brush thing to go with that and I have been enjoying using both of those things um, I thought I would mention them because they're not just great if you need um, stuff if you have arthritis but I think they're just great all-round kitchen objects utensils anyway and I always like giving them a shout out the Sun wants to be in on this video I feel like maybe that was the end of my list was it the end of my list oh I had one final thing two final things um, a few weeks ago, a month or so ago, I made a video talking about um, finding meaning in, in nature and how last year I had really loved seeing um, foxes in our local wood and how that had meant a lot to me emotionally and I'd become rather attached to them. Um, and a lot of that, a lot of you said that resonated with you and you thought the fox stories were nice. So I thought I would, I would tell you there have been a couple of other fox instances one was, um, it was a few months ago, it was before Lena left London, she used to live around the corner from me and now, now she has moved to the Midlands, um, but before she left, she came round and we sat uh, in front of the building um, and I had brought down a cup of tea and I was carrying a tray with two cups of tea on it, but I... I don't know why, but I was not very coordinated that day and I had spilt the tea across a lot of the tray. Um, it was also completely dark it was completely dark I think it must have been um it must have been February or something it was before it was really light in the evenings so I came down and I put the tray the wooden tray on the floor with the spilt tea <laughs> and she went and got her mug and I have my mug and we were sitting far apart outside and chatting and when we were chatting I looked up and this fox had come uh, it was like something out of a picture book. It had come out from the hedge and it was watching the two of us having this conversation. So it's like a triangle, Lena and me and this fox. And the fox came over to the wooden tray that had the spilt tea on it. And it sat down and it just licked up the tea very slowly as it was watching us have this conversation as though it wanted to be part of it. And I thought I should probably store that for a future picture book possibly because I thought it was lovely. I really enjoyed that. There is a new fox cub in the wood at the end of our street. Um, I don't know if I still have a video of it on my phone. If I do, I'll insert it here. I, it's a terrible quality video, like awful. I don't think you can even work out that it's a fox, but it was so strange. I thought it was a Pomeranian puppy. That's what it looked like. It looked like a Pomeranian puppy and I thought someone had left their dog behind, but then it turned out to be a very tiny 
fox cub, which was sunbathing, which was super cute. Uh, final, final favourite is that the rhododendrons on Hampstead Heath are open, are present at the moment, and they're always so beautiful. They're right next to Kenwood House, and um, I saw them last weekend when I went for a walk. I have this footage here, which I took on uh, Instagram, so it's not a very high quality, but I am also in the process of filming a longer reading vlog at the moment, um, and I uh, did go for a walk on Hampstead Heath and filmed some better footage of the rhododendrons, but I just thought I would mention in case any of you happen to live in North London and you're able to get to Hampstead Heath, because they're not around for that long, for about a month max, and then they're gone, so if you fancy seeing them, and you can, they'll be around for a few more weeks, and they are rather spectacular. Very much recommend. So those are some things that have been bringing a smile to my face recently. Um, yeah, thank you for joining me for this video. Again, sorry if I'm a bit low energy, but you know, some days are just like this. Some weeks are just like this and that's okay. Um, I will be back with a bookish video next week and sending lots of love to you all.